Thank you, Chairman. Appreciate it. And uh, Secretary Lee, thanks for your testimony today. Um, for what it's worth, um, my sense is that other countries in the region are looking to us to figure out what is our plan um, long term for Assad. And until we have a clearer picture and, and can give them a better sense of what we intend to have happen, um, I think it's difficult for us to get them to help us um, in terms of isolating him and certainly not um, uh, developing a, a normal relationship with him. So uh, our U.S. policy on his side, <clears throat> does he deserve any official role in the post-Civil War Syria? Um, those, those are questions I think have to be answered. But that's not my question today because you've talked about that issue, uh, unless you're interested in, in answering that. Um, I, I want to focus inst instead on two issues. One is food and using food as a weapon. We've seen President Putin do this in Ukraine. Uh, he's doing it as we talk. Uh, we've also seen uh, Assad and his supporters in Russia do that. Um, the Russian diplomats at the United Nations Security Council have consistently abused their veto power, as you know, to gradually close down these aid corridors going into Syria. And aid groups from around the world um, who have been trying to feed some of the literally starving people in Syria are frustrated by it. Russia is making their work much harder. I guess they believe that by taking away this um, ability for NGOs to help on the on the food front, that it forces people to rely on Assad, and somehow that his uh, legitimacy would be enhanced by that. Uh, one, I'd like to know whether you think that's true. Um, but my question to you is: There is a resolution coming up next month to hopefully reauthorize the one remaining border crossing for aid that is still being used. So the one corridor left, um, will Russia veto that resolution? And uh, what are you doing and, and what is Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield doing to engage other countries to ensure that this resolution passes and that these food corridors, this one last food corridor can continue? So your comments on all that would be appreciated. Uh, thank you, Senator. Uh, you know, uh, to, your, to your question, uh, food as a weapon and is this is the theory of the case um, that by making people, uh, Syrians, more food insecure, it makes them more dependent on Assad? I mean, uh, I think, frankly, the answer is a bit simpler. It's just a cruelty for cruelty's sake. It's brutality. It's, it's punitive. It's because they can do it. Now, all of that, oh, oh, and, and that it was the, the sorry uh, record of over a decade of, of, uh, of, the, of the conflict. Um, as to your question about 2585, uh, we are uh, un we are already well in, uh, underway in terms of a, a very uh, methodical and aggressive effort to have that uh, expanded, uh, to have Bab al Hawa renewed as a cross border checkpoint, uh, as a cross border access point into northwestern uh, Syria, and we will look for further uh, access points. Uh, it is more critical this year than even last year when it was quite urgent that that be uh, maintained. Uh, food insecurity is all the greater because of, of Putin's uh, brutal war on Ukraine and what it has done to lock up uh, Ukrainian uh, wheat stores and other commodities in the ports, Odessa and other ports. Uh, so uh, it is more critical than ever. And the humanitarian community is fixated on it. The donor community is fixated on it. And uh, frankly, I think there is a very wide consensus already that that uh, cross-border point must be renewed. Well, you've anticipated my, my second question, which was about Ukraine and whether indeed that the Black Sea blockage that the Russians are insisting on, uh, the blockades particularly of Odessa, are having an impact in Syria as they're having an impact on uh, global food insecurity. And you said it does have an impact. And in fact, that those grains from Ukraine, including the wheat uh, that is you know, part of these humanitarian aid packages, uh, is necessary to export because it is keeping people alive. Um, so I thank you for, for that. On the SDF issue, uh, this is a constant frustration with Turkey. As you know, the Turks believe that somehow the SDF is um, a uh, significant threat to them. And once again, my understanding is they're threatening to go on the offensive against uh, some of our allies in the SDF. And uh, the STF has even signaled in some cases, as I understand it, they might be willing to partner with the illegitimate Assad regime uh, out of desperation to be able to repel these attacks. 
One, do you agree with that assessment? And two, have you engaged with your Turkish counterparts to urge them not to attack our allies in Syria? And if so, what has been their response? Thank you, Senator. <clears throat> Uh, the Turkish government is very well aware of our, our, of our views. We've, we have had a series of high-level uh, engagements with them. I have not yet. I'm about a, a, a week or so into my job. I'm, going, I'm looking for an early opportunity to engage uh, the government on this. Uh, but uh, any venture, any military operation across the border into northern Syria, first and foremost, uh, puts the civilian population in the crosshairs. Um, and secondly, uh, severely puts at risk a critical mission that the global de-ISIS coalition, the U.S., is undertaking. And obviously it puts in, in, into the crosshairs uh, our own uh, partners in that mission. So we are uh, completely uh, uh, unstinting in our efforts with the Turkish government uh, to back them off on this, on this uh, ill-considered venture. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you.